What's up everyone, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Tesla Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm gonna break down some very important news involving Tesla stock, which you should be watching for as time progresses. But just note that I am not a financial planner. Make sure you take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link. If you deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit 1000 bucks, you're guaranteed 15 in total. And offerings very soon, in just about two days from now. Anyways, looking at the way the market's looking, Tesla's actually holding up quite decently so far. We saw a little bit of a dip all the way back down to the 227 area only to get bought back up. And so far, it's starting to shuffle within this range. So it's kind of range bound right now. But the question is, is Tesla about to see an explosive move even higher? I'm going to give you guys some more levels to watch for for confirmation of a break if that ends up being <laughs> if that ends up being the case or not. So one thing worth noting is that we don't really have a whole lot that's coming out going into tomorrow. We have very, very minor data in the morning, but then 30 minutes after market open, we have the Joel's job openings. That's the only data that's coming out that's actually worth noting. That's actually going to be more significant. Uh, so I just want to note that you don't have to worry about holding anything overnight or if, you know anything's going to happen with CPI or anything like that. There's nothing like that whatsoever. As far as Tesla goes, there's some news coming out that Tesla's full supervised FSD uh the, the version 12.5 is coming out so that's actually going to be very useful for them this is a lot of very very cool looking updates uh he believes that tesla could also deliver on his promise of an unsupervised fsd by the end of the year or will he be surprised that's like the big question a lot of people are talking about we'll see how things go i think that the most important thing is going to be the robo taxi events to see what tesla announces about this and their capabilities and also uh you know musk does get criticism for not always being uh, you know, right with every single date. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of progress being made. And I can't wait to see what Tesla ends up giving us. So we have the 12.5.1 version for the FSD. The the wide release is going to start today. Uh, Musk is saying that it's very important to connect your Tesla to Wi-Fi to receive the updates. So that's going to be very important. And I think that uh, we're going to be looking at a lot of uh, improvements. When talking about the FSD 12.5 and 12.6 last month, Musk claimed that it will take over a year of driving to get even one intervention. So we'll see once we get there. I know that Elon Musk is not perfect with dates, guys, but I just want to say this. He's not lying, okay? We will eventually get there. There's going to come a point when Tesla eventually gets to this, these levels, and they're way ahead of their comp competition. So it's, it's very, very cool, very, very awesome stuff. I'm very excited about this. So I'm not necessarily worried. And we'll see how things end up going. We shouldn't really kind of rule out what Tesla has achieved already. And we'll just give it some time. So what about the share price? Where do I see the share price going? Honestly, guys, it really depends. Tesla pushed all the way up to resistance at 234. That's going to be our 200 EMA. If it rejects here and we fail to get a break through that, we're going to be retracing back down towards 225, in my opinion, our 50 EMA. That's also previous... Uh, resistance becoming support and the breakout area. So there's a lot of confluences of interest at 225 if we fail to break that resistance. But if we do break 234, if we manage to break this resistance, I think that Tesla could go all the way up to at least 238. And then possibly if that breaks, then we're going to be looking for some explosive moves up to fill this gap from earnings all the way back into the 246 area, which is a pretty crazy big move if you kind of think about it. So could Tesla explode? It's always a possibility. But there's no confirmation yet that we're breaking the resistance. I want to make that very, very clear. There are a lot of people asking me about that. Let me just say that right now there's no confirmation. But Tesla is going to see a massive breakout yet. We just have to give it time and we'll see if we break resistance. So watch the levels I called out. I do think that there is potential for it. But there's no sign of a breakout quite yet above our 200 EMA. And as of right now, Tesla is just range bound. So when I show you guys the levels, okay. This 227 area was also the previous um, resistance becoming support. So that's very common for Tesla. And then our 200 EMAs, our resistance, it's been just going back and forth and back and forth between supply and demand, not really doing a whole lot. So I think Tesla will continue to shuffle here. But in order for us to continue to push, we got to break that resistance at 234. We'll see if Tesla could break that or not by tomorrow. So be very, very patient for now. For SPY or SPY, the setup is very, very interesting because we're trying to break out. That's the interesting thing. It's trying to break. It wanted to go up to 550. It was trying to. But so far, the buyers don't have the strength to really push SPY all the way up there. And they're starting to lose momentum as time goes on. That's a big concern. 
right? We were supposed to do that. So we have that gap to fill below now, and we're kind of struggling to do so. So SPY is really struggling to get that breakout towards above 550. And because it's coming short, there is a risk of it tipping lower. So it's not looking that great. So be careful, guys. Make sure you watch 542. We actually came very close to that level today. If we lose 542, we're going to be coming down to fill the gap to 539. And if that level does not hold, we still have that gap to fill all the way down closer to 536. So we'll have to be very careful. 536 is our super critical support. Uh, we haven't tested that yet, but just keep that in the back of your mind. If you want to turn bullish on this thing, we need to at least close above 546. That's going to be like a good sign. We got to break these highs at the very least in the 547s. Break those, and we could be looking for 550 all over again. Hasn't done that yet, so there's going to be a risk of this tipping a little bit. We'll have to wait and see, but just notice that SPY is looking a little bit lackluster. So is ES. So I actually have a trend line I want to show you. So we have this line right here. Uh, basically, ES has been rejecting off this line multiple times. I think I could redraw this just a little bit. We could adjust this just a bit like this. So you guys could see that, you know, it, it's been struggling. It came very close to testing this trend line again. We came just short. Are we going to touch this and then reject? Are we going to dip from here? If we reject and we fail to break the trend line, then this may continue to dip back down. So be careful with ES. The setup is still more bearish. This is not looking that great. For SPX, we have been trying to rebound, right? We called a rebound that was coming. It did rebound a little bit, but now it's just trading very flat. We'll see which way it breaks. If we break past the 5490 to 5500 area, we have that gap to fill above. And if we lose support over here around the 5425 area, we could be dipping back down to these lows. So be careful. We're just stuck in the middle. So give this some time for... Um, NVIDIA, you know, we're just barely at the low levels. We've been stuck with, within the range between 112 and 116. There's a risk of this dipping lower. We're unfortunately failing to hold above uh, the support. So I'm seeing a little bit of weakness building here, especially after this wick formed. So it's building weakness and there's a risk of NVIDIA dipping a little bit lower. Uh, it's still very close to 112. So we'll see where it closes, but just note I'm seeing a weakness on the chart. For Bitcoin... Bitcoin has a slight bearish divergence right over here. We also have our 50 EMA. That's 67,000. Not doing a great job at holding up. So I called out 70,000. I said to watch the reaction there. We came, we basically touched 70,000 only to reject. And now our support's at 67,000. We're stuck within that range. If you look at the last couple of days, back and forth, back and forth between 70,000 and 67,000. So we'll give it some time just to see which way it goes. But I do want to note that there's a risk of it tipping lower back down to these imbalances all the way back down towards 65,000. So just be careful with that. For the QQQ, this is dipping right now on a bit of a downtrend, but we're fighting to hold above 464. Ideally, 466 would be a better level to break above, but we haven't done so yet. So watch 464 as resistance and support at 462. We're still stuck within this range, but there is a risk of downside now because we're struggling to break past our 50 EMA on the four hour time frame. So not the best setup for the triple Q. You guys can see it quite clearly. It's continuing to downtrend as well, very similar to that of SPY. We'll see if we get a breakout or not, but just notes that we're kind of consolidating and there is a risk of some downside. For others out there, we also have Apple. Apple's just continuing to consolidate as well, not really doing much. We have 220 as a key resistance, and we have support at 216. As of right now, we're just getting tighter. I'll see which way it breaks, though. We're still stuck in the middle. So it's very indecisive. We just have to wait and see. Otherwise, we're just completely range bound for now. For a few more, we have the IWM. We actually are failing to hold 222, which is not a good sign. I'm going to be looking at our next support at 220. We'll see if this holds. Uh, I'm going to be very patient with this. It still could be like a cup and handle. I mean, it's still a possibility. Just watch 220 to see if that holds. That's going to be our next support. For the QQQ, not QQQ, Coinbase, excuse me. We're dipping. We have this gap to fill all the way down. It might be revisiting our 200 EMA towards 234 to 235. I think it might dip a little bit more. And then we'll have to see if it bounces or not. If it loses that, there's a big gap to fill here. And we also have like a head and shoulders setup. So it's not looking that great. This does favor downside a bit more. For Amazon, we're trying to hold right here. We have 184 as key resistance and 182 as support. It's not looking too good, guys. It's not looking too good. But the reason why it's not looking good is because of the fact that um, you know we could be establishing a lower high for Amazon. And we're failing to break past 184. So there's a risk of this potentially rejecting. Not looking that great, but we haven't officially rejected anything yet. So we're just kind of shuffling right now. If we were to break 184, I'll be looking for a push for 186.5. 
If it fails to do so, we'll be coming back down. Otherwise, we're just completely trading sideways, not really doing much. Same thing with Meta. It's looking a little bit weaker than Amazon. Uh, there could be a risk of 460 all over again. If that fills us, we have a gap to fill below, so we'll see how it goes. And if 472 breaks, we could try to rebound, so we'll see. For Microsoft, we have a lower high being established. Um, if this rejects, we could be dipping back down to 420. If we break through this, we'll be looking for 434. As of right now, we're making lower highs and lower lows, so the trend is more bearish. We were trying to rebound. We did get a rebound, but we're not doing the best of jobs at holding up, just like the rest of the market. Google, on the other hand, is showing a little bit more life. It is possible. So it's, it's kind of tight right now. It technically has potential to go up to about 173 for a little push. But like I said before, not looking that strong. Uh, still on a bit of a downtrend. It loves to kind of curl and reject, curl and reject, curl and reject. And it's kind of curling. It might be a rejection coming. So not looking too good. But it might. There is still potential for it to push a little bit towards like 173. We'll see if that ends up being the case or not. Anyways, that's, a, that's it for my analysis. Um, as far as Tesla goes, Tesla's doing a good job at holding up. It's actually outperforming the market. Uh, and also notes that our resistance around that 234 area has a confluence. We have our hourly 200 EMA and also the 4 hour 50 EMA aligns with that. So if we were to break 234, yes, Tesla could run quite a bit more. That's going to be a very, very key resistance. If not, you know, you know, Tesla could just get a, you know, a bit of a dip. So we'll see. We're just watching that resistance. This is where the new range happens to be. And we'll see how things go. Anyways, I want to thank you all so much for listening. Hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys very soon on the next one. Thank you and peace out.